is Super Tie. I am joined, as always, with my close friend, comic book Brando. Uh, tomorrow we have a lot of new comics coming out. There's actually a ton of really great stuff. It's we a just, big week. Yeah, it's a huge week. We just can't talk about all of it, but we'll let you know some cool stuff coming out tomorrow, the 25th of September. Uh, supposedly it's fall now, but I don't feel it. It's still hot as hell outside. Yeah, yeah, it's decently warm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as usual, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything you want to ask about, just put it right here. You know, if you want some recipes, I can help out. Um, but yeah. What's your best recipe right now? My best recipe is my homemade empanadas. Ooh. Yeah, I, I make them with some uh, spicy beef. Sometimes I do shredded chicken with some tomatillo sauce. Ty's known for his spicy beef. Yeah, that's right. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with a book that I've been loving right now, which is Batman Curse of the White Knight. This is issue number three. So, basically, everything's just going horribly. Uh, Azrael burning up everything. Uh, Batman's being blackmailed. Uh, Barbara Gordon has been outed as Batgirl. Like, just a lot of bad stuff. And it's all building to a head in here. And also, Harley Quinn is pregnant and very pregnant so who knows there might be a little uh, bundle of laughs coming up very soon a you like that one bundle of laughs yeah uh written drawn by sean murphy has some help with uh, matt hollingsworth but i love sean murphy's art style it's very scratchy and frenetic and you can feel the action from it and uh he's also a very mean writer and you know sometimes you need a mean batman story so yeah it's awesome i love it ciao curious what's up what's up what's up we're gonna keep it on that Batman train with the beautiful black label number one of Harleen by Stepin Sedgwick. Stepin Sedgwick. Oh, I'm never gonna say that. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Your art's beautiful, but I have no idea how to say your name. Stepin Sedgwick. That's well, that's what Mila told me, and like you know, she's from Macedonia, so yeah. I trust her. Uh, yeah. So this is great. This is a uh, how do I put it? Uh, a more mature audiences version of the Harley origin story but what I like most about it is it doesn't like look past what's come before it it actually embraces all the Harley origins that and it still sort of like touches on this and that and kind of like combines it into one kind of smooth cool origin story the artwork's gorgeous uh, and we get to learn about Harleen Quinzel's uh, coming up in Gotham developing a, a, a thesis that she can she can help the uh, uh, criminal mind that has been subjected to uh, basically being on the inside too long you know, figuring out how to help them and uh, it's so good you get appearances from like all over the Gotham sort of uh, range of characters mostly the criminals but you get to see uh, uh, Lucius Fox in there and Hugo Strange shows Oh, cool. Up. So you're getting like a full Batman picture without very much Batman. There's a little bit, um, uh, and of course, lots of the Joker. So it's going to be a very interesting tale. I really like that her point of view isn't completely head over heels in love. Mm. She's, she's a, a very dedicated scientist slash researcher and... Uh, I'm very intrigued to see where they go with it. Like I said, a gorgeous book. So Black Label knocks another one out of the park. Very excited. Check it out. I also love that cover. It's, so it's amazing. Good. There's actually two really good covers. Both covers are fantastic. Yeah, they are. The, the other, other is one. her kind of more in like a classic suit, doing a little like backflips and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, staying on this Batman train, Batman Superman number two. So our friend David Marquez does the art for this book. It's awesome. Uh, so. As you can tell, the Shazam who laughs, or as he likes to call himself, the world's mightiest nightmare. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so Billy Batson has been infected with, you know, the Batman who laughs, you know, the evil drug. And, you know, how do you fight one of your best friends? Plus, they can also turn into a child. And, you know, Superman's rearing up for a punch and he turns back into Billy Batson and he's like, ah, oh, no, I can't punch a child like that. Mm. So, very interesting. There's a little contention between Batman and Superman, too, in this issue because, you know, Clark wants to save everybody. Batman wants to get what needs to be done, done. So, you know, that really raises some issues when you're trying to save the world from one of your friends. Love this book. It's very awesome. The artwork's amazing. The writing's spectacular. It's great.
<laughs> Wade asks, what up, gentlemen? Oh, uh, uh, nothing, sir. Just talking comics. Yeah. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor says, punch children more. You know, Taylor, you do you, buddy. It's a, it's a weird hill to, to defend. Batman's favorite comic, Powers of X, number five. So, yes, this series has been so good. Oh, you it's all so good. know that. You, I mean, I've seen so many faces coming in that have maybe lapsed in their comic reading for a while. Everyone's getting back on the X-Men train, and it's been so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically the X-Men have an island, uh, a sanctuary, and they're working on a government and a, a nation... I mean, they basically just got recognition as a nation. Yeah. Um, so where do you go from there? You extend the invitation to the bad guy uh, mutants of the world, the evil mutants. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sure. Hang on. Uh, come hang out with us. Uh, Acolytes and Sinister. And yeah. Omega Black Red. Black Tom Cassidy of, uh, out of nowhere. Yeah. So good and just mind-bending. I, I love what Hickman does with large cast of character stories and this is the largest cast of character stories so uh, it's going crazy I'm absolutely on board I don't know how it's gonna wrap up but we're just we're getting there Got two more issues after this yeah two more weeks after this so good well this book takes a little while to come out but it's always worth it when it does Shazam this is issue number seven so I had to actually like read a couple of back issues to like remember what exactly <laughs> happened because it has been a while since it's come out uh so the whole shazam family uh captain marvel family as i like to call them they are stuck in all these magical lands that surround the earth lands so there's like uh the, the animal land and you know the dark lands and all this other stuff well some of them are stuck in wonderland slash oz and then two of them are stuck where Taki Tanya's from, the tiger. And I was like, oh, cool, he finally showed up. Uh, and then Billy and Mary, they ha came out to their parents as superheroes. And the mom, of course, is very upset, but the dad's like doing, you know, flips. He's so happy. He's like, we got superheroes. Uh, I love Shazam. I love Captain Marvel. I uh, really love this story. Wouldn't mind it coming out just a little bit quicker, but I will wait for quality. I've always said that. So, yeah. It's really fun. It's a fun book. Yeah, if you but, love the movie as much as we do, yeah, you should it, be it's reading the book. fun, and that's what I liked about it. Nice. Do you know who the greatest crime fighter of all time is? Sherlock Holmes. No. <laughs> but I'll give you another clue. He's celebrating his 50th anniversary. Oh, I know who it is, but I don't think they do. It's Scooby Doo. Yeah. Sing the song. Yeah. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sing the song with me. Um, Scooby you know we got a mystery to solve. So Scooby Doo, get ready for your act. Don't, Don't hold back. back. Hey, Quan, it's 50th anniversary of Scooby Doo. 50 years old. Zwig, gee, guys. <laughs> you just spit on my face. <laughs> I mean, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks for the assist. Uh, yeah, so Scooby Doo is the greatest. I grew up watching Scooby Doo, as I think everyone did some iteration of Scooby Doo. James Gunn did the movies. Absolutely one of my favorite films. Um, even a pup named Scooby Doo from the 90s was super hilarious. I was mm -hmm. a big fan of that. Scooby Doo meets Batman. Scooby Doo meets Scooby -Doo. Don Knotts. He met Kiss. John he, Cena. He met. Uh, Elvira. Oh, um, recently. God, what? Uh, Jerry Reed from oh, yeah. Smokey and the Bandit, he shows up. The, the Scooby-Doo movies, yeah. Mama yeah. Cass. And, yep, loved it. Yeah, he met everyone. I just Sandy love it. Duncan. I just love it if you're like, Sandy Duncan? <laughs> Jerry Reed? Like, what are you doing in this haunted house? Oh, just here. Just here. Okay. Okay. I'm not a plot device. Let me do my Jerry Reed just singing a song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Scooby-Doo. So this is the classic group, of course, and uh, nine stories of Scooby greatness. Uh, including a little birthday celebration. Uh, so fun, 100-page special. That's a lot of Scoob. Uh, like, wow, man. A lot of, a lot of Scoob snacks happening. Uh, my next one is Strike Force, the new Black Ops team from Marvel. So, uh, I don't want to give away too much. Basically, it starts off with all of these heroes just stealing a crap ton of very infectious viruses and diseases from the CDC. But they don't know they're doing it, and they actually get in trouble. And like, wait, what? Those heroes or other heroes? Uh, it's these, and maybe a couple others. Uh, and then Blade comes in and he goes, "Oh no, I, I know what's going on." 
but he won't tell the Avengers. So it's a mystery of what's actually going on. Huge fan of the, the whole team that's going to be in here. I mean, we got Winter Soldier. We got Wiccan, or Demiurge, as he's called now. Uh, we got Spider-Woman, Angela, Photon. Uh, got some Damon Hellstrom, as you can tell from the little fire thing here, which always been a Damon Hellstrom fan. There's also the facsimile edition of his first appearance coming out tomorrow as well. That's Marvel Premier, Marvel Spotlight number 12. Yes, yeah. good job. So uh, if you wanted a little more Black Opsy type of story, you know, super powered guys that aren't really scared to get their hands dirty, give it a shot. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number 30, an absolute carnage tie-in. So yeah, Spidey's got a lot going on. He's trying to help save the world from Carnage showing up to rip all the codices out of everyone who's ever worn uh, uh, symbiotes. Mm -hmm. uh, but meanwhile, Kindred is making some uh, some motions of his own and, and has a little visit in uh, uh, was it Riker Island in Marvel Universe? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's like Black Eight. No, that's Rikers. DC. Yeah, Rikers. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so Kindred makes a visit and uh, uh, has some some things to say to someone. Super cool. Love that uh, Carnage stuff and I've uh, been loving Spider-Man so much. So uh, we're getting a very intense storyline with some danger just uh, threatening the edge of uh, Peter Parker's world. My next one is from Vault Comics. This is called The Plot. Uh, I didn't really know much about it before I read it, obviously. What a cover. Uh, yeah, it's really awesome. There's two other really cool covers as well. One is a uh, send-up to uh, First Appearance of Swamp Thing mm. kind of thing, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so the whole story behind this is there's this guy. He's kind of, kind of the mess up of the family, the black sheep. And his estranged brother and sister-in-law die, and he gets control, or not control, uh, custody of his niece and nephew, who don't really know him. So he decides to take them all back to the original family home that's been in their family for 200 years. As you can tell, it doesn't go well. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of mystery uh, revolving around everything. There's this uh, mantra that's repeated throughout the entire thing. Uh, in order to receive, you first you must give. So it's just like, what does that involve? Uh, very interesting, very dark. I really like the artwork to it too. It's uh, you know very atmospheric. Pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm actually gonna buy this tomorrow because it looks really nice. Faithless number six from Boom Studios. Brian Azzarello and Maria Lovett have crafted a intriguing tale of sex and Satanism uh, in the comics. Yep. And this uh, wraps up the first story arc, which they'll then take a break until next year. But we've got some lurid situations and some peculiar uh, dark magic things happening. Definitely not for children. Nope, 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 nope. Adults only, please. Uh, but the artwork is gorgeous. All the covers are really good. There's some saucy covers too. <laughs> um, Faithless has been like a really intriguing tale of like uh, not just sex and Satanism, but celebrity mm -hmm. and the art scene and. It's, it's always cool seeing Azarello write for a, um, I was the word I'm looking for, like in a particular tone, for like a particular uh, uh, type of sort of upper class, upper crust, okay. um, devil may care type uh, persona. I mean, he writes for everything. Yeah. But uh, uh, I really dug this. Uh, I love the tone of it, and I can't wait to see their, where they go with it. It can be a bit of a wait, but the first story arc has been so good. Speaking of saucy, Sif Six, or Safe Sex as it's actually called. Uh, <laughs> I was like, do they call it? Sif well, it, it's listed in Diamond as SFSX. Uh, uh, I really didn't know what to think about this. I was kind of blase about it, but then I read it. And it's actually a really great story. So it takes place about 10, 15 years from now. And there's this religious party, you know, like political party that comes through called The Party. And they kind of bureaucratize sex and they say it's under the you know banner of you know preserving feminism but you know like feminism means you're supposed to look nice but not too much and all this other stuff so it's a very oppressive society uh this is also not a book for children at all a lot of naked uh, a lot of naked and uh so it's just it becomes this giant political conspiracy book like halfway through it you're just like okay you know 
a weird bureaucracy of the future, and then like it kind of turns into Brazil. You remember that movie, Br oh, Brazil? I do remember it kind of turns into that, where you know, if you get lost in the bureaucracy, it could be deadly. So like, I was actually very impressed with it. At first, I was like, eh, but then I read, it, I was like, oh no, this is great! It's awesome. I'm honest. I'll be honest with people. You know, I mean, it's an image series. I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah, and it's worth it. I liked it. I thought it was really great. Good, uh, good creative team. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good creative team, my favorite creative team, Criminal Number Eight. This is the fourth part of uh, it's a story arc called Cruel Summer, and it is so phenomenal. Just like uh, getting to know the characters a little bit more. This one follows her around. Um, she's feeling very uneasy about the upcoming heist. Everything is going so good, but that's always bad. Oh yeah, because if it's going good, that means it's gonna get worse. She realizes what what's sort of bugging her, and so she she chases after uh, that thing. Uh, so good, phenomenal. Uh, Brew Baker and Phillips are the noir heroes of comics, and like they could just do comics. They could do this comic forever, and I will never get tired. Of it. Yeah, always good. It's always an intriguing criminal story, and dang, I just love it. So if you're not reading it, get caught up. It's phenomenal. You don't have to have read all this stuff before, but it's also part of like a large sort of decades long world that they're building. My next one and my last single issue is a book called Relics of Youth, which is also by Vault <laughs> Comics. Uh, yes, in a way it is. It's faithless sequel is very adult. Yes, very true. So is SFSX. Yes, very. Um, so Relics of Youth, it's about these six kids and for some reason, they all have the same tattoo. They don't know where it came from, that it's just there. And it's a tattoo of an island. So it's kind of getting into lost territory. They all have dreams about this place, but they've never been there. And they don't even know each other. But this girl right here brings, starts bringing them all together. And so you got a kid who's dying of cancer. You got another kid who's like an ROTC student, a young celebrity a very rich kid with, you know, double may care attitude, and then a music prodigy. And they're all just, uh, they get to the island and then that's where it goes crazy. Uh, once again, I wasn't really sure what to think about this one. I read it, I was like, oh wow, this is like a cool mystery now. And it gets like little, um, what's the word, supernatural at certain points, but also, you know, once you're in the, you know, in chains of islands in certain parts of the world, pirates show up too. Oh, sweet. So yeah, like it takes a lot of different directions, but fuses it into this really cool story. So I'm in, I'm gonna keep reading this. I thought it was really awesome. Do you remember the numbers from Lost? Four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. Nice. Yeah, I was obsessed with that show for a while. I tapped out pretty early. Right yeah, I, I watched it all the way through. I was obsessed with that show and Heroes. Because the first season of Heroes was so good. The first season until the last episode. <laughs> was so good. The last episode, I was like, what? This is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> but I watched it. I own all the DVDs to the both entire series because I'm a fool. Loved the first season of Lost. Loved most of the first season of Heroes. Second season of Lost, I thought was intriguing. And then they kind of, <laughs> like, ruined it in the third season. I was like, oh, whatever. And that's when I bailed. Wonder Woman 79, my history of lost watchers. Okay. <laughs> uh, Wonder Woman 79, love is gone. And that makes fighting very difficult for Wonder Woman because that is like the main principle that she fights for. Uh, and that's a bad time for that because Cheetah now has this really cool sword that Lex Luthor gave her uh, that has uh, got some very special uh, powers, if you will. And she's about to cut Wonder Woman in half. Goosh. So, time to fight back, Diana. Uh, super good, beautiful story. I really love Wonder Woman's run out of the past year. I think it's been excellent, and you will too. Or you won't. <laughs> My next one is a series that I don't think a lot of people give a lot of credit to because they're just like, oh, you know, it's that thing from when we were kids, but. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this series that IDW's been doing, this is now volume 22, it's freaking fantastic. Uh, one of my regulars came in, he was like, dude, just try the first volume, just try it. And I was like, I don't know. I read it, it ties everything together, and like Kevin Eastman's been writing it this entire time. And like, it's like, 
It even explains, so, hey, why were they all wearing red bandanas for a while? And then, you know, like, were they just mutated animals, or was this something else happening? So good. Anyways, this is the next huge story arc called City at War. Uh, this is part one of that, and this also leads into the very first female Ninja Turtle, except for Venus de Milo from that really weird show that they did for a while. You remember that? I do. Terrifying. <laughs> uh, but it leads up to that. It's just going to be an all-out brawl, uh, which is one thing that I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles does best. If you've ever been wondering about it, take the tie guarantee. You'll like it. It's like the best elements of all the turtles. So you've got like right. the ongoing sort of pathos of the original Mirage Ninja Turtles, but you got some of the fun, weird characters of the cartoon and uh, the, the Archie series and like the, the more colorful animal characters. Yeah, Ray Filet shows up. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, cool. Uh, another really cool thing about this is it's written for people like us. You know, we're adults now, but we grew up with these characters like people get straight up stabbed in this like i mean it is you know they use the weapons that they have and you don't have to have read anything ninja turtles before either no not at just, all like totally jump into it and it's like it's like getting like getting into walking dead you, know, yeah. you can start at the beginning and just like learn about all these characters and then truck right along heroes in crisis hardcover this beautiful hardcover edition of the Tom King Clay Man series uh, is about uh, superheroes having trouble dealing with uh, the, the world that they live in, the fighting that they do, the situations that they find themselves in. So they have a special place called Sanctuary where they can decompress and talk about it and share and start to feel better about things. Only that place is attacked and heroes villains are murdered straight up murdered and uh, it's up to batman and superman and wonder woman and uh, every other hero to find out who did this why they did it uh, and is it harley quinn and or booster gold because they were there and they are the most likely suspects intriguing story brought up some really interesting sort of uh, uh what's what I'm looking for. perspective ptsd sort of like yeah. And just things you don't really think about with these characters. And it brings up like DC history and things that happened to these characters and how it affected them. Really intriguing stuff and a really good read. So check it out. My next one is volume four of Monstrous. This just came out, or is coming out tomorrow, sorry. Uh, so I've been talking about Monstrous every issue that has been coming out recently, and that's what comprises this. Uh, so in case you're not really 100% sure what this story arc is about, Maika, Maika, I never know how to say it uh the main character uh there's this war brewing between humans and arcanics you know like the magical people in this realm and she's just trying to avert it she's trying to make sure it doesn't boil over and she gets kind of trapped by this guy called the lord doctor who is a demigod of this certain part of the land who may or may not be her father and uh so Get ready for a lot of violence. Get ready for a lot of interesting takes on fairy tale lore. Also, uh, get ready some, for some beautiful art because beautiful. this art is gorgeous and Marjorie Liu is doing an amazing job weaving a brand new uh, kind of mythos. There's, like, there's a lot of fantasy books going on right now. And it's sort of hard to pick and choose, but that is definitely one of the top ones. Paper Girl 6, this is the final volume wonderful series by Brian K. Vaughn, Cliff Chang. It's so good. So our four uh, teenagers from Stony Brook, Ohio, 1988, they've been to the past. They've been to the far future. They've been even in weird versions of the, the present. Uh, they've been all over the place, all over time. Actually, it's mostly been centered around Ohio, but uh, they've been all over time. And now they are finally coming back together to where it all started. So good, just a gorgeous book. Uh, some some big realizations from some of the characters they've met along the way. Uh, just so phenomenal, and it's unlike anything I've ever read before in a comic book. So uh, usually I see time travel. And if it's not Back to the Future, I'm pretty much like nope. But this has been one of my favorite, maybe even right after Back to the time travel stories. Wow, bold. That's a bold claim. Bold statement. I absolutely love those movies. So, 
yes, if you have like sort of 80s nostalgia, if you just want a really cool tale about some, some kick-ass uh, newspaper girls, this is what you want. My next one is from Ta-Nehisi Coates. This is Captain America Volume 2, Captain of Nothing. So, Cap's been framed for murder, and that's never good. And, uh, yes, Christine, the last Paper Girls comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Cap's been framed for murder, and now he is stuck in prison. But not just any prison, he's in the Supermax of Marvel Universe. There we go. Um, <laughs> whoops, let's... Okay, it's still going on. It is still going. Okay, cool. Uh, totally thrown off now. Sometimes I get a call. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, he's surrounded by all these criminals that obviously hate Captain America, but you know, like any prison movie or TV show, you gotta make fun of some. And so he makes some that you're really surprised with who he uh, teams up with. But then there's also this group called the Daughters of Freedom that are gonna rescue him. And you'd be amazed at who is actually in that team. It was pretty interesting. Uh, I like ta Coates' Coates's uh, comic book writing right now. I mean, Black Panther's killing it. New issue of that's coming out tomorrow. New issue of Cap is coming out tomorrow. He just kind of gets it now, and I love it. It's great. Awesome. The Goon, A Ragged Return to Lonely Street by Eric Powell. Oh my god, I love The Goon. I'm so glad it's back, and it's right here. Uh, all the new issues in a new volume one. You can absolutely jump in right here if you've never read an issue of The Goon before. However, I really recommend you pick up, uh, has, has it come out yet, The Omnibus? Um, or is that solicited? Well, uh, they've been doing like the bunch of old crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like they've been they coming like up. The first one, right? I think the first two were out. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. Get, get caught up if you are so inclined. Or if you've never checked it out before, just pick up this one volume. And I promise you'll get it. It's great. Up. It's so good. He's just a, a tough ass character and he fights zombies and giant spiders and vampire mobsters. Vampire mobsters in this one. Frankie. A mummy. There's, in previous volumes, there's a, a metal mad scientist, Dr. Aluminium. Uh, so good, so good, and absolutely the most fun book you can just pick up and read. Uh, there's just like dirty street urchin like humor. Yeah, well, and it doesn't take itself too seriously. No, and that's what I like about it's it. It's the most fun. If, you, if, if you're the kind of person who could pick up an issue of Famous Monsters of Film Land and name any of the monsters in it, you're gonna love this book. Uh, so good and hilarious and he's a such a, an amazing artist that like has sort of like just embraced the lowbrow art yeah uh, but he's phenomenally good and I love that he does what he does do yours uh, next cuz I have the next book club next. okay battle chasers anthology this is uh, we've been wanting this one for a while. This is a collection of every published Battle Chasers comic by Joe Metalero. Uh One of our favorite artists, and this is a book that did like really cool fantasy stuff before anyone was doing really cool fantasy stuff. Got a lot of attention, like when it was coming out in the 2000s? Yeah. Like early 2000s? Yeah. Late 90s, early 2000s. Hard to remember. Uh, but so good. Uh, and Matarera, like, is this great anime influenced art style that has be since become much more prolific and like a lot of people doing it but yeah he was the only guy doing it at the time uh him, him and adam warren i think uh but it's so good it's just great and uh like i said it's cool uh fantasy and it's you know there's a lot of that out there but i think that's why they they put that out because they knew that people were interested in, in seeing this again yeah uh, my last one is next month's book club. Tonight they are doing the book club uh, book of Catwoman, the Rebirth first volume. We like sold out of that too. Yeah. Those people were very excited about the Catwoman book club. And the next one is perfect because it's going to be Halloween-y. Oh, it's so good for Halloween. Immortal Hulk. I can't tell you how great this is, except for it's just really great. There's never been such a scary Hulk book. It is yeah. just like jaw-droppingly intense and horrific dark uh he puts it puts the monster in yeah monster you know but he's not just like hulk smash he's like i want to destroy the world yeah and like he can do it 
a world breaker that is like haunted and tormented. And it also gets oh, really like, David Cronenberg body horror a lot in this. Yeah. Just like there's some parts in here I'm like, oh god. Uh, so good. So uh, we have our book clubs every last Tuesday of the month. Uh, so last Tuesday of October, come on by for this. Read up, hang out, talk about Immortal Hulk. I might, I might sneak over there and just talk a little bit too about it. Except you got to be here. Well, I mean, I'll go really quick. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about what's coming up. We have a uh, stable pre-party. That's going to be October 11th, my birthday. So I'm going to be working that night. Happy birthday yep. to you. Totally cool. Um, what else do we got going on? We have uh, the art show on Friday. Yes. Yes. The uh, history of horror. Yeah, I'm really stoked about that one. Uh, our Halloween horror show, or art shows are always really awesome and amazing. There's like 40 pieces to this one. Vince is over there working like a mad scientist. Yeah. Just putting it all together. He's got, you know, he's got like eight different uh, cauldrons brewing and it's yeah. just so much cool stuff. So that's at Guzu Gallery this Friday from 7 to 10. Uh, PM. Our horror art shows are like, you could tell that the artists just like kind of go a little crazy for it. And yeah. They just get to do like characters that they've always wanted to do. So much fun. Yeah. So there's going to be drinks, music. We have a musician coming by. Uh, I'll be bartender for that There'll night. Be tricks and treats. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm super stoked about it. It's going to be awesome. Um, what else do we got going on? I believe Jean Yang will be here. Jean Yang will be here October 18th. That is going to be for the Superman Smashes the Clan uh, book, which is really awesome. If you're not familiar what this is, uh, a writer for the Superman radio show infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan and through Superman's radio show gave away their location so they could be arrested by the cops. Like, I did not even yeah, know that. Yeah, that's, that's what amazing. it's about. Yeah, like it's this guy who was just like kind of infiltrated. And so, is then, it, so it's about the dude then? Yeah. Oh, that's so Cool. Yeah, it was. It's really cool. It's like an amazing history of comics thing. So Superman actually did smash the clan. So I was like, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, seems to. We need some more of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> sad talk. Uh, <laughs> what What do you got going on, buddy? Uh, well, they'll be playing some Magic the Gathering tonight at Outlaw Noon. Sweet. Uh, we'll be live streaming some uh, Dungeons and Dragons on the Outlaw Moon Facebook page, featuring a new player, someone recognizable for friends of Austin Books. Uh, Alicia will be joining oh, the, that's the cool. squad. Sweet. And, uh, yeah, and then of course, this weekend, Friday and Saturday, we have multiple pre-releases for the new Magic set, The Throne of Eldraine, which is really cool because it's a set that combines uh, fairy tale mythos and Arthurian legend with all sorts of fun stuff gingerbread men knights it'll be very cool and fun uh and we get uh, basically you buy the pre-release pack which has six packs you make a deck out of it you compete in a tournament for a chance to win more of the packs nice it's super fun uh saturday i'm playing a show in san marcus at the kiva lounge i'm really stoked about it we're playing at midnight <sighs> i'm old saturday? yeah i'm old sleep in the next day. i'm old and tired though I'm, uh, I'm old and tired, Ooh. and I'm the youngest guy in the band, so I don't even know how they're feeling. I can barely rock. I I can barely rock, uh, but that's pretty much all I got going on. Uh, old worker from the shop, Alex, had a baby. That's Congrats. cool. Uh, so yeah, like little baby diamond. Yeah, shine on you, crazy diamond. Damn, that would have been a should have been named Lucy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't got anything else. You got anything else? It's all for me. Cool. Uh, you can follow me at Super Ty Denton One. You can follow you at Comic Book Brand. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we will see you tomorrow, or whenever you want to come in. Come Just... by the art show. Oh wait, 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 really quick. Best of Austin's going on right now. If you haven't voted for us, give us a uh, vote for Best Comic Shop. That we would really appreciate that. Really want to win this year. Let's yeah. do it. Bye.